Hi, my name is Troy, and by now, you've already labeled me. Let's see. I'm uh, white middle-aged male, brown hair, goatee, uh, shorter than average height. Some of you can see I have a wedding ring and tell that I'm married. Some of you can even see that I'm getting gray hairs and can tell that I have a daughter. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with labels. Labels are neutral. All of those things about me are true. What's important is what you do next. Jumping to conclusions and stereotypes based on those labels is what gets us all into trouble. You know from your own experience that people don't know everything about you at first glance. And so labels, at best, can only tell part of the story. For instance, just by looking at me, you can't tell that I'm a photographer and a web designer. And you can't tell that, even though I'm a computer nerd, that I love to go hiking. And yes, I'm a white male, but I don't drink beer. I don't follow sports. OK, I do drive a hybrid. Um, and, and I can't sing and I can't dance at all. So, um, but let's see. I'm married. I'm straight. I have a wife. And as you can see, she's black. She's also a Buddhist. And I'm athlete. And yes, I do have a daughter. And <laughs> normally people label her as black, but she is also Native American, Norwegian, Irish, and Bohemian. She also loves chocolate. And you never be able to tell by looking at her that she has a green belt in Taekwondo and it was breaking nine boards last night. Finally, you may be able to tell by now that I'm an introvert and this isn't really my thing. But I wanted to come here today to talk about why I've gone out of my comfort zone to photograph more than 5,000 strangers posing as the three wise monkeys. The world is shrinking. Between travel, relocation, the media, and the internet, we're being exposed to a wider variety of people than ever before. That means we're interacting and learning about people that don't look like us, don't act like us, have different experiences and different beliefs. And that can be really fun and interesting a lot of times. And other times, it can be really uncomfortable, especially if you're used to hanging out with people that are very similar to you. And I think the reason for that is when we meet someone that's different from us, we tend to focus on those differences and those labels. And maybe we think about stereotypes that we've heard about those group of people, or just are always thinking about how they've done things totally different from the way we've always done them. And it's that discomfort and sometimes even fear that makes it hard to work together and live together. And there are a lot of big problems in the world that we need to solve. And we need to work together to solve them. <coughs> if you look around you, everyone is different in some way, but we have far more things in common. And so, and think about what we could achieve if instead of focusing on all those differences and those isms, that we appreciated those differences and even used them to our advantage. So how do we do that? Well, traditionally, talking about race and religion and politics was considered taboo. You're not supposed to talk about that in polite society. And so it's very common to think that the way we all get along and work together is just to not talk about our differences. And when it comes to race, to be colorblind. But it's gotten to the point where some people think that even mentioning someone's race makes you a racist. Or celebrating your own holidays is somehow offensive. And if we're not talking about those differences that we all have, you know, we are different. If we can't talk about them, then we're not learning about them. And if we're not learning about them, then we have to rely on stereotypes even more, which just makes things worse. So, and I don't want to live in a world where everyone has to pretend to be the same just to get along, where we can't be ourselves and celebrate our own traditions. 
And so I'd like to have a different approach. I want to make talking about differences not taboo. I want to be able to talk about differences and learn about them, to understand them more. And even if you don't you know, agree with everything about a person, that you at least know where they're coming from. And you can relate to them as a person. Most importantly, if we knew more about these differences, we'd feel more comfortable around those kind of people. And that takes away the power from people that try to use our fear of differences against us to divide us and control us. So I took my experience in photography and web design, my weird sense of humor, and my desire to make the world a better place for my multiracial daughter to grow up in. And I created the No Evil Project. And that's where the 5,000 people and the monkeys come in. The premise was simple, that just because people are different and we may not agree on everything, that that doesn't make them bad and definitely doesn't make them evil. And unless you have you know, a secret fortress high in the mountains and you're devising nefarious plots to be about the end of the world, then you know you could be part of the No Evil Project. The first goal was to show that people that are different from us are, well, people. So many times when you talk about differences, you start it becomes this us versus them, and you know this, the them is this this list of faceless stereotypes. I want to rehumanize those labels. A lot of times stereotypes work because you don't know people from that group, or don't think you do. I grew up in a, in a, in a city and went to a pretty diverse school, but I had grandparents that grew up in southern Minnesota, and their diversity is like you know, different kinds of Scandinavians, and sometimes you meet someone that's not Lutheran. And I remember going to visit them one time when I was little, and my grandmother was so excited, she had big news. And she's like, oh, you know, I met a Negro yesterday, and he was so nice. And I went, well, yeah, you know, and I thought it was really funny, but it wasn't that my grandmother had anything against black people, but she hadn't met any. So all she had to go by was what she'd seen on TV and movies and stereotypes she'd heard. Experience challenges stereotypes. My grandmother's experience reminds me of these days when people are against gay rights until they find out that some of their friends or family members are gay. It humanizes those labels and makes it easier to relate to them. So obviously we can't meet every single kind of person in the world that would take far too much time and be kind of impractical. But seeing pictures and putting a face to those labels helps. Seeing that they're real people. All those people that I showed you for the samples, those are real people. Everyone in the project gets photographed. And to show that they're not bad and definitely not evil, they pose as the three wise monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, and speak no evil. And well, the poses kind of helped break the, break the ice too. Next is I wanted to emphasize the good. So many times it's the bad deeds of someone that kind of paints the whole group. I was working with a group of middle school kids and we had made a list of different labels and we divided the room into thirds, positive, neutral, and negative. And as we read through the list, the students had to stand in the section of the room that they thought you know, that, that label meant to them. And we got to the word Muslim, and one of the kids had a hard time figuring out where to stand. Now this wouldn't be surprising these days, but he was Muslim. And so we talked to him, and he's like, well, my family is really nice, and they're cool, but I keep on hearing all these bad things about Muslims in the news and from other people. And so I'm like, well, do you believe what you've heard from other people 
or do you believe your own experiences? And so, of course, he went and said in the positive side of the room. But it just goes to show how powerful negative stereotypes can be. Why can't it be that a good deed is what labels a whole group? And why can't there be good stereotypes like that? And so everyone in the project has to come up with a good deed that they've done to show that they're not evil. And we have everything from saving a life, to volunteering at a nonprofit, to smiling at strangers, to rescuing worms from a puddle after a rainstorm. There's a little bit of everything out there and all the stuff that you just never hear about. And I can assure you that no matter what the person's labels are, they have something good that they do. Finally, for the labels themselves. Everyone has to pick three labels, and they range from race, religion, and politics to um, occupations and hobbies, sexuality, medical conditions. Um, really divisive things like favorite sports teams or Mac and PC people. <laughs> and, you know, it's just really fun seeing what they come up with. And, you know, sometimes, you know, talking about these things is uncomfortable. But talking about, you know, labels and stereotypes is a lot easier when it's introspective. You're probably trying to figure out right now what your three labels would be. And it's really hard. Um, one, you probably have more than three. So you're trying to whittle that down. And every label has some positive and negative things depending on the, the group. And so you're trying to think of what you want to put out in the world. And then you start thinking about, well, I wonder what other people think my labels are. And you may think of some time when someone mislabeled you. And so maybe you should pick a word that lets them know that they are wrong. And then you start thinking about how you label people. And that's when you take a step back and think about the own stereotypes that you have and the biases that you have. And that's what makes a difference. Originally, I was just going to have a few of my friends do this. And like I say, now it's become, I've photographed more than 5,000 people from festivals and schools and colleges and organizations. And people even upload their own to the site now. And it's been really rewarding. And the more conversations we have, the more we learn about all the good things that are being done by people, no matter who they are, and who we think they are. The more we talk, we find out about all these things that we have in common with people that we thought were so different. And that can change everything. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go around making monkey faces at total strangers. I think that might be counterproductive to let them know they have things in common. But I'll leave you with this. Take the time to think about all the good things that you've done and the good things going on in your community. Take the time to pick your three labels. And finally, go out of your comfort zone and start a conversation. Together, let's see what we can do. Thank you very much.